Hello and welcome to another Raggy's uh, Beers, Wines and Spirits review but also um, to finish off a homebrew uh, update as well. So three weeks ago or thereabouts I started off this fella and it's Butler's, um, or the Connoisseur's Butler and it's their Ruby Dessert Kit, a six bottle port wine kit basically, although, although they call it Ruby Dessert and that's for that's to stop um, getting any issues. So today I um, transferred it to another um, bucket, shall we say. Then added citric acid, uh, red wine flavour, and then port wine flavour. And mixed it up, uh, siphoned it out into bottles. And here we have the bottle. Now, like anything, this is day one. So. I've already had somebody who's done this before and he says you have to leave it a year so it may be the thing that it's not going to taste great at day one and you can add sugar what sugar does is, is put make makes it more into a into shall we say a syrup syrupy wine rather than just a, um, a standard thin on the mouth wine so a bit more thicker on the mouth I've not put no sugar to it because it's already at 18%, 18 to 20 percent in strength, and uh, so crystal clear colour, more of a red than a, a black in colour. You know, more of a, a, a lighter red than what you'd normally expect from, say, a red wine, which is normally quite a bit darker on the nose. Unmistakable, the unmistakable smell of alcohol. Now, I don't think this will be that great from day one because I've only just added the port wine flavour and it was only a dinky bottle. Certainly can tell it's got some wallop to it. Well, let's uh, take one for the team. So thin on the mouth feel, which I expected because I have not added more sugar, don't want to. Um, there's a hint of sweetness to it, which obviously poor is sweet, so so it's down the right uh, path, it's strong, whoa, jeez, do I know about it, I've had no food today, um, you yeah, had a bag of crisps earlier, so I'm chuffing, starving for want of a better word and I think that's why I feel a bit rough to be fair um, but no, I wasn't expecting a great deal you pay a tenner for a kit 59 pence for the sugar so the costings are £10.59 then if you had deli delivery in as well obviously it will go up unless you've got a local homebrew shop that uh, sells it um, but we'll go on the fact that I paid ten pound fifty nine. About one pound seventy odd a bottle for port. You know the cheapest port you're going to get is about seven or eight quid a bottle, even from Aldi and Lidl. And this stuff, bear in mind, it's got to mature. It's had the oak chips put in, although I'm not getting no oakiness. Oh, wow, there's an oakiness in the background. It's definitely sweet and it's definitely strong. Wow. I've just done a ginger wine review and the ginger wine was about 18% and I had a, I had a nice glass, you know. One must um, have a decent sized glass to get the full uh, a taste and strength, you know. And on, a, on an empty stomach, this is my second glass, and I'm not joking, I feel a little bit uh, tipsy. Oh. But, what I will say is, it's made a nice, sweet red wine. Um, can you class it as a port yet? I don't think so, not yet. Has it made a nice ruby dessert wine? Hell yes. Um, yeah. 
So the thing, the key with this is not to expect too much. You, I haven't paid too much to make it. One pound seventy-eight. If I was paying four or five quid to make a bottle, uh, each bottle, then I would expect something uh, much higher quality, shall we say. But as it is, yeah, it's for what it is, it's not bad. Um, you always lose out when you buy the six bottle kits. If I'm being honest, I hate six bottle kits because you don't get the full, you know, you're paying a tenner for that kit where you can pay 40 for 30 bottles and that's £20 saving on what you pay for the same same sort of amount. Makes a difference. Um, so in, in some ways, this is a more expensive way of doing it than buying some like a Beaverdale or a Cambridge Connoisseur kit, or whatever you call them. Um, so this classes itself right up with the most expensive wine kits. Um, so like I say, you know, you are losing that. I've got a right white sweater. on. These days, with this bloody coronavirus rubbish, if you're an hypochondriac, somebody who thinks they're suffering from something, this is going to push people over the edge. You know, my mum, bless her, when she was alive, she would have every every illness. You know, I'd go around with an aching neck. She's had an aching neck for six days. <laughs> and uh, I think that's where I get it from. But on a serious note, it must be frightening the hell out of people. Um, and the media and the government, they just aren't helping people. You know, there's, yes, it's scary. Yes, there will be people who die, who aren't, who aren't coming out the other side. But the vast majority, the vast majority will never ever see it. They'll never experience anybody or their family who's got it. You know, it's not like... Um, Outbreak that film Dustin Hoffman in where you know there were, there were hundreds were dying within a short space of time. So, um, you know, and if you get it, you know, um, make sure you're insured, make sure you say your goodbyes, get a video camcorder, say you love people, you know, leave something. Right. Well, before I go down the morbid road, because I can, it's dodgy time of the year for me. My mum passed away in March, and we buried her in, in, on Paddy's day, and uh, yeah, it gets emotional. I'm drinking wine, don't tell either. So, yeah, really got a nice sweetness to it. I can't wait to see how this matures. Um, I've already put into motion, I'm going to do some major home brewing this year. It's been a while. Uh, I made a cock up on the last three home brews I did. Um, even, the, even the commercial kits that I bought, I, I didn't brew them, I should have brewed them in the house in the warmth. And, uh, you know, even the best of us make mistakes. But uh, in that life, that's life. You know? None of us are perfect. If we're all perfect, we'd all be millionaires, living a great life, not working, enjoying life, no stresses. Yeah. Ah. But then again, look at somebody like Robin Williams. I mean, he had everything, you know, you would think from a distance. And yet he still had anxiety, stress, depression. That eventually, did he take his own life? I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, how sad, you know. The human, humans, you know, you got to look after yourself. Right, so. Like I say, day one, good sweetness. It's palatable, it's drinkable. It ain't no port yet. That will come with time. Whether I even give this time to drink, that's another thing. But, um, I mean, somebody said they waited a year. Uh, there's no chance on God's green earth I'm waiting a year. No way. You know. It's isn't happening. But what I can say is from day one, it tastes like a nice, sweet dessert wine. And a red wine as well. So if you like your wines on the sweeter side, and you, but you want to try red, this is an amazing um, avenue to explore. And bloody hell, it's strong. Between 18 to 20%, I'm getting walloped by it. 
which is why I've only gone all, all sentimental all of a sudden. I need to go and lie down on the settee and have a chill. Um, out of five then, 4.4 .4 out of five. Absolutely bob on. Not as good as the ginger wine I did, that was amazing. But still decent, I, I liked it. Um, leaving it that bit longer to ferment has made a difference, I'm sure. You know, I left it for three weeks. I didn't, I could have knocked it on the head after a week, but no, I kept on going and going and going. And then today, adding the other stuff to it. And I know it's got to mature, but wow, what a beauty. So, do I recommend the kit? Hell yes. Yeah. Do I think it matches up to commercial ports? No. Not yet. It may do in time. Does it do what it says on the tin? Ruby dessert. Yes, it does. It's made a nice, sweet red wine. Um, eventually, it may match up to ports. You can add sugar to this to make it sweeter, but bloody hell, there's enough sugar in there as it is. And it's... it's um, Yes, you can make it sugarier, make it more port-like in that respect. But I think a drier, slightly drier version is better. Not only for your um, own well-being, you know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who subscribes and everyone who posts comments. I do read them, even the sulky ones. And uh, I don't reply, but I'm busy, man. Life, life's busy, you know. I'm, I go to work. Do other work, do a bit of reviewing, do the home life, and uh, you know, try and sneak it all in here, there, and everywhere. And uh, the one day I can uh, retire from work and do beer reviews and tours of beer companies all day long will be a fantastic day, all day long talking about beer. Oh, and you know, there was a job the other day in Nottingham working as a wine assistant, uh, wine merchant. I thought to myself, shall I take a drop in wages just to do that? Because I can talk all day about wines, beers, spirits, you know. Something I absolutely love doing. Maybe. And it'll be warmer in the winter as well. There's a the thing. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Cheers.